the second part in this part we are going to cover the remaining principles of uh, uh, treatment from modern medicine point of view and in the third part we will be dealing with 24 modalities as described in ayurveda now we have already seen stabilization of vital organs or pratyakheya chikitsa the next principle is prasara pratibandha or prevention of spread now this prevention of spread depends upon the root of poisoning if the root is gastrointestinal tract the first treatment that is advised is use of demulsants demulsants are uh, substances which coat the inner lining of stomach and prevent absorption the substances used are milk egg white glycerin ghee or calcium carbonate water another way to prevent the spread is adsorption of poison on activated charcoal so a slurry of activated charcoal is also given this activated charcoal has large surface area and many of the poisons get adsorbed or attached to particles of activated charcoal so once they are captured by activated charcoal they cannot be absorbed now in this whole procedure one thing we must remember is egg white is contraindicated in mercury poisoning as it produces mercury albuminate which is very uh, easily absorbed and large amount of mercury can be absorbed if we give egg white in mercury poisoning so for vaidyas who give mercury formulations it is very important to remember that if there is an overdose of ayurvedic drugs then please do not give egg white now for injected poisons there is no need to stomach wash but there is one condition where the poison which is absorbed is secreted in the gi tract particularly opiates are secreted in this way and a late stomach wash can be useful in opiate poisonings in case of applicable poisons which are rubbed on skin or uh, on mucous membranes of eye nose or mouth in that case wash the area of lesion with proper fluid if acid exposed uh, surface is there please irrigate it with water large amount of water um, dilutes the acid as well as uh, takes it away from the site in case of inhaled poisons take the patient away from the source of exposure and start oxygen uh, artificial respiration with oxygen supply and start uh, symptomatic treatment that we have already covered in first part now the next principle is removal of unabsorbed poisons so in case of ingestion of poisons evacuation of stomach should be achieved either by emesis or stomach wash induction of emesis is indicated in conscious and alert patient if patient is unconscious don't do emesis if patient is incoherent don't do emesis the simplest way is to use syrup of epicac 
in adults it, uh, it is used in 30 ml dose whereas in children from 1 to 5 years of age the dose is 10 to 15 ml uh, for household emetic we can use black mustard powder in water but be sure to avoid common salt solution copper sulfate solution or apomorphine better option than MSS is gastric lavage it can be used 2 to 5 hours of ingestion of poisons usually in conscious and alert patients it is routine procedure with insertion of gastric tube um, Ryle's tube is too small but gastric lavage tube is uh, has a thickness of thumb and uh, larger uh, amounts of fluid uh, can be inserted through the tube uh, warm water or potassium permanganate solution is usually used in case of unconscious patient insert cuffed endotracheal tube in the airway and then insert the gastric tube and this requires training and skill for gastric lavage place the patient in left lateral decubitus position with head at lower level than feet tube is inserted orally sometimes in case of children it can be used nasally also the tubes are different uh, the tube should at least have half an inch of diameter and should be 150 centimeters or uh, 5 feet long assure the tube is, in, uh, is not in the airway you can auscultate the sounds of breath or you can dip the open end in water where if the tube is in airways bubbles will come once you ensure that tube is in stomach then 300 ml of water is poured through the funnel and when it empties the lower uh, the end is lowered than the level of head so that the fluid is drained by gravity now important thing to remain is uh, to remember is retain the first washing of for chemical analysis because in the first washing most of the poison can come out and it will be an evidence so 300 ml first wash that fluid should be kept aside as an evidence in case of poisoning it should be labeled properly and uh, chain of custody should be started uh, the whole thing um, which accompanies any case of evidence now after this first washing usually for every cycle 300 ml of lavage fluid is used this is termed as aliquot so 300 ml aliquots are used uh, and with potassium permanganate there is slightly uh, pink color to the solution and we should observe the returning solution if the returning fluid is clear then we should stop the lava um, pour the slurry of activated charcoal into the stomach and then remove the tube next
there can be many complications and there are contraindications the complications are vomiting aspiration pneumonia esophageal or gastric mucosal damage and very rarely perforation of stomach whereas in contraindication do not use stomach wash or gastric lavage when the poisoning is from corrosive when the poisoning is from convulsions if the patient suffers from esophageal varices and if the poisoning is from petroleum distillates now various gastric lavage fluids can be used warm water even tap water is sufficient normal saline or half normal saline that is 0.9% or 0.45% saline can be used various oxidizing solutions are also used most common of them is potassium permanganate one in 5000 that is 5 liters of water should be infused with 1 gram of potassium permanganate another oxidizing solution is of tannic acid or we can use iodinized water particularly if uh, the poisoning is from vegetable source suspected alkaloidal poisoning then oxidizing solutions are extremely useful now for cyanide sodium thiosulfate solution 25% is recommended for iron this ferrooxamine 2 grams in 1 liter of water for carbolic acid castor oil and warm water 1 is to 2 should be used and oxalic acid poisoning we can use calcium gluconate in lime water Uh, calcium hydroxide in water that can be used now the next principle is use of antidotes antidote is a substance which counteracts the effects of poisons various classifications of antidotes is seen in various textbooks but commonest is as follows first is mechanical or physical antidotes which act by minimizing the absorption of poison as we have seen in demulsants which can be used in corrosive and irritant poisons are mechanical antidotes egg white is a mechanical antidote which will coat any metallic Uh, particle and render it non toxic then the second type of antidote is chemical antidotes which act chemically by forming non toxic complex with the poison for example if we use magnesium oxide for acids the acids will be neutralized third type of antidote is pharmacological antidote which acts by producing opposite effects with the poison for example naloxone is used in morphine poisoning the action of naloxone is to reverse the actions of morphine it doesn't act chemically with morphine but it competes with the same receptors and removes morphine from the receptors now fourth type of antidote is the so called universal antidote it is a mixture of substances which doesn't merit its name the substances used are tannic acid 25% milk of magnesia 25% and activated charcoal 50% uh, actually 
the tannic acid is supposed to be useful for oxidation of alkaloids charcoal is for adsorption of uh, poisons and lime water is used for uh, acidification uh, neutralization of acids in the stomach now <clears throat> there are various antidotes which can be called as physiological antidotes and they counteract the physiological actions of a poison for example atropine counteracts the action of parasympathetic poisons like physostigmine and physostigmine counteracts action of sympathomimetic poisons like atropine so atropine and physostigmine act against each other now prazosin counteracts alpha adrenergic action of scorpion venom and dr bavaskar has demonstrated that using a simple medicine like prazosin can save lives in lethal scorpion stings now there are specific antidotes for specific poisons for paracetamol it is acetyl cysteine for cyanide it is amyl nitrite for cholinergic agents organophosphates carbamates and amanitin it is atropin for oxalates oxalic acid fluorides benzyl penicillin is used for iron and calcium calcium salts uh, iron and aluminium calcium salts can be used and for cyanide again there are newer antidotes like desferoxamine uh, and dicarbolt edetate digitalis glycosides there is a specific antidote called digoxin specific antibody fragment or fab then for arsenic it is dimercaprol or bal four dimethyl aminophenol or four dmpa is also used for arsenic ethanol can be used for methanol and ethylene glycol flumazenil for benzodiazepine poisoning sleeping pills glucagon for beta blockers and glucose for insulin for cyanide hydroxocobalamin part of b complex vitamin group can be used for paracetamol and ethylene glycol methionine and no, methanol we can use 4 methyl pyrazole which is better than ethanol to counteract methanol poisoning desi daru or toxic uh, alcohol is methanol for opiates naloxone nalmefine is used for organophosphates oxymes are used like palm carbon monoxide hyperbaric oxygen is the antidote for copper penicillamine is the antidote and for central anticholinergics physostigmine is the antidote thallium which is used for bipolar disorders is very <clears throat> sensitive kind of uh, drug uh, its over dosage is very easy and for that potassium hexacyanoferrate or prussian blue is the antidote for beta adrenergics 
propranolol protamine sulfate pyridoxine are the antidotes for heparin sodium nitrite and thiosulfate are the antidotes isoniazide which is anti tubercular drug cyanide lead mercury and arsenic we can use dmsa or sushimer or dmps or unithiol now the next stage after use of antidotes is removal of absorbed poisons the poisons which are already absorbed in the blood stream here we can use carbamazepine as an interruption to enterohepatic circulation so that there comes a barrier between stomach and liver we can also try enhancing urinary excretion by forced diuresis this is particularly useful in phenobarbital or salicylate poisoning next level of treatment is dialysis particularly in theophylline lithium this is a particularly indicated technique and there are advanced methods of dialysis which are also called as extra corporeal techniques like hemodialysis peritoneal dialysis hemoperfusion etc uh, other methods like purging whole bowel irrigation di uh, diaphoretics uh, the substances which induce sweat and force alkaline diuresis all are used um, inside the body when we take the blood out of the body purify it and use it uh, infuse it again the methods are called as extra corporeal methods corpora as you know is a greek word for body extra corporeal means outside the body main four methods are used peritoneal dialysis hemodialysis charcoal hemoperfusion and plasma pheresis indications of extra corporeal methods are severe poisoning progressive deterioration in spite of full supportive care when there is high risk of serious morbidity or mortality when normal route of excretion of the toxic compound is impaired when the poison produces delayed but serious toxic effects and when the patient is having cardiovascular respiratory or other diseases that increase the hazards of poisoning we use extra corporeal methods extra corporeal method is a medical procedure which is carried out outside the body as we have already seen usually it is a procedure in which blood is taken from patient circulation to have a process applied to it and returned to the circulation dialysis literally means exchange of chemicals across a semi permeable membrane so that is the definition of dialysis this can be used with various semi permeable membranes in peritoneal dialysis the peritoneal fluid uh, the peritoneal membrane acts as a uh, dialysis membrane or semi permeable membrane and as peritoneal membrane is inside the body you can see in the figure that it touches the uh, part where body is mentioned all other three are truly extra corporeal 
where blood is taken out of the body most common of them is hemodialysis and advanced techniques are plasma pheresis and charcoal hemoperfusion another tube comes out of the peritoneal cavity peritoneal uh, fluid uh, dialysis fluid is taken in a bottle and emptied in the peritoneal cavity and then through other tube that fluid is taken out now hemodialysis is useful in ethanol methanol ethylene glycol chloral hydrate lithium trivalent arsenic acetaminophen that is paracetamol then phenobarbital bromide salicylates fluoride sodium chlorate digitalis methaquilone boric acid and thiocyanates now charcoal hemoperfusion is highly useful even with protein bound poisons hemodialysis cannot remove protein bound poisons here charcoal hemoperfusion is more useful because uh, the protein bound poisons adhere to charcoal in the membrane the substances that have large volume of distribution and are lipid soluble are mainly used uh, Um, mainly the indications for charcoal hemoperfusion barbiturate salicylate paracord phenytoin theophylline chloral hydrate digitalis glutathione methaquilone methotrexate pentobarbital carbamazepine theophylline paracetamol everywhere charcoal hemoperfusion can be used the circuit in charcoal hemoperfusion is heparinized and primed with saline from body arterial blood is taken to filter the filter is charcoal coated polymer fibers which has very large surface area and adsorption of poisons or protein bound poisons takes place and then after filtration the filtrate is taken from filter and given to the body via venous return now plasma pheresis the word greek word plasma means something molded and apheresis means taking away the removal treatment and return of components of blood plasma from blood, blood circulation is essentially called plasma pheresis filtered and uh, then mixed with uh, blood and returned to the body now we come to the next principle of treatment that is symptomatic treatment Sy- symptomatic treatment becomes a priority when symptoms prevent patient compliance for example vomiting or convulsions we cannot administer various drugs in such cases so we have to treat the symptoms first symptom uh, symptoms which indicate the start of irreversible changes are also very important for example loss of power in the limb is a symptom which indicates some cerebrovascular accident so we have to treat the symptom first when the symptoms are life threatening like severe dehydration or shock or hemorrhage we have to treat them now we come to the last principle that is secondary prevention secondary prevention is prevention of repeat episodes this is particularly important in case of suicides but also in case of accidents so secondary prevention needs adequate follow 
for secondary prevention. Uh, one objective of uh, follow is treatment of complication if any and in case of suicidal cases psychiatric treatment is needed for a long time. Psychiatric treatment may be very useful or necessary even for relatives and friends of the victim. Symbol or icon that this is poisonous and there is also the treatment protocol on the label. So these things are important in secondary prevention. We will continue with 24 modalities of treatment as mentioned in Charaka Samhita in the next lecture and their role.